Get peace of mind with the RV Advisor's extended warranty for as low as $14 per month. Visit thervadvisor.com today. This is the RV Advisor Podcast with your host, Tom Alexander. Get all the latest information, trends, advice from experts, stories from the road, and more in the world of recreational vehicles. Now, here's Tom. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RV Advisor Podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. And today, I am speaking with Julia Sharp. Julia is in uh, the great state of Montana. and. Um, she joins us. Uh, I, I got to tell you, it, you know, I'm, I we were talking earlier, Julia, and, and you've got these beautiful wooded areas behind you and everything. It looks absolutely beautiful. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. That's great to have you. And and uh, yeah, Montana is one of the places on my list that I absolutely have to visit. Uh, big sky country. And uh, you're yeah. not too far from Glacier, right? Not at all. We are about 30 minutes outside of Glacier right now, and uh, we're here for five weeks. So happy to spend a good amount of time here and enjoy the area. Yeah. And how's the weather there right now? Pretty, pretty nice. Uh, it's been rainy this week. Uh, last week was beautiful. When we arrived, it was the most perfect weather, 70 degrees, sunny. Yeah. Um, it did snow a little bit in the mountains. So some of our hikes and going to the Sun Road and Glacier uh, ha have been thwarted by the snow a little bit. But um, that's also a good thing to be here in off season is it's just a little less crowded as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at your uh, your Instagram page and uh, it's called the, the, the Honey Wagon, the Honey Wagon. And um, tell us a little bit about the origin of that name. Not much of an origin, just a little bit of toilet humor, I guess. Um, <laughs> the honey okay. wagon. We, we're, we, we like that. <laughs> uh, the honey wagon is is something that you know it's the truck that will come and, and haul haul the poop away. And a lot of times, the slang term for the honey wagon uh, it's called a honey wagon is the the bucket that you actually dump your waste into out of the RV is a lot of times called the honey wagon. So uh -huh. I joked that we were we were the crap that was being hauled away. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> you know, that that's up that's up to you to decide you want to agree or disagree with that. But uh, no, that's <laughs> that's that's funny. Uh, so there you go, the honey wagon. And um, you know, kind of a play on words there, I guess you could say, or or, or or an irony because the last thing it smells like is honey, right? I guess is what you absolutely. Think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh so you know, this full-time traveling obviously um is 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 something that everyone does for the first time at some point it's is their first time and you know there's a there's usually a transition from going from bricks and mortar to to uh life on the road how, how was that how was that for you uh well it was many years in the making we first got this idea um about three years ago and it took us two and a half years to get to the point that we're at now we um, it took the longest time was was getting our jobs to allow us to go remote. So we started working on that in 2018, mm -hmm. um, started slowly asking to work one day a week remote, two days a week, three days a week, and then finally we were full time remote. Um, we actually, this is our second RV. The first one we had, to, we renovated, decided it didn't work for us. So we're going through the second one and then downsizing for us was relatively easy. We didn't own a home. We were renting at the time. Um, so being able to move and transition into the RV was, was relatively easy at that aspect. Yeah. Um, you know, and sometimes, you know, particularly folks maybe coming from a, a really big city and, and used to city life. And then suddenly they, you know, they transition into this life on the road. Uh, it might take a little getting used to. So it depends on, it depends on the person, I guess, uh, and what they're used to and what their sense of adventure might be. Uh, sure. And yeah, yeah. So, um, and well, listen, I'll tell you what, we'll take a quick break, but we want, when we come back, we want to find out about some of the places you've been and some of the places you're going. This is the RV Advisor Podcast. Our guest is Julia Sharp. My name is Tom Alexander. Back in just a moment.
GPS is Gigi's personal services. She's an RV expert with over three decades of experience. Visit thervadvisor.com today. We're back on the RV Advisor podcast. My guest is Julia Sharp, and she is from The Honey Wagon. If you go to uh, Instagram, uh, very simple. You uh, go to Instagram, and it is a backslash uh, underscore The Honey Wagon. The Honey Wagon, and that's that's how you find her. And it's got some, uh, some really, really cool pictures. Uh, I'm kind of... Uh, you know, scrolling through some of these and, uh, you know, not only an interior of a really beautiful unit that you're riding around in, but also um, just some amazing locations. And um, I want to ask you before we talk about uh, where you've been and where you're going uh, about, about the unit itself. Um, It it really is beautiful. I mean, did you, did you kind of, uh, uh, do the interior decorating on that uh yes I'm 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 main decorator my boyfriend is assistant decorator but he Uh he didn't help all that much (laughs) gotcha uh I I got free free reign of the camper on the inside so yeah it was a newer camper it was a 2018 when we bought it uh in 2020 so it was just a couple years old our last camper was well over 20 years old and we renovated that one as well there was a lot more work to be done on a 20 year old camper so it was nice to, to start off with something a little bit newer. Um, so most of the updates that I've made to it were, were pretty cosmetic, just some painting. I replaced um, some countertops, added you know, my own furniture and decor. And, and really, it was a pretty simple transformation and, and yes. not an expensive one either. Well, I could tell you, uh, from the outside looking in, uh, you've got a, a great eye for, for that. And it, it, it just looks very homey, inviting, and a fun place to, to just... Uh, chill out it looks really really nicely done um thank you yeah so so um you you were telling me we were talking a little bit in the break and you'd mentioned about uh uh, uh you hit a few states on the way to where you are now in montana and georgia mississippi right and a few others correct yeah. yep yeah so we started off in georgia earlier this year and then we worked our way on up moving every week for a week about three hours at a time so moving slowly it took us quite a while to get up to montana but we went through georgia mississippi alabama uh, arkansas missouri kansas city iowa you name it nebraska all of them stayed in each one of those for about a week at a time which was fun to explore um, and then we got to south dakota in april um, off season for the Badlands, but we stayed in that area in the Black Hills. We were in South Dakota for a month. Um, and then after leaving South Dakota, we um, made it on over here, over outside of Glacier, where we will be for the next four weeks. That's terrific. And, and so, of course, being a full time RVer, you know, it's always about the next thing and what's, what's going what's gonna to be the, uh, the next place to see um where to from here sure so after we leave here we're gonna hop on over very close to um very close to here just about a two-hour drive to northern northern idaho to um sandpoint idaho Mm -hmm. where we will be for a couple of weeks and then we're gonna work our way back down through montana and into wyoming and yellowstone um and then after that where we'll be in yellowstone for about a month we're going to head on over to california and our first stop is yosemite yosemite Great, right. So uh, two of the most famous uh, locations in the country, Yellowstone and Yosemite. Um, Absolutely. Both, both <laughs> with their own unique uh, points of interest and uh, certainly something that uh, everybody should see at some point in their lives. Um, uh, in, in California, is that going to be a trip down the coast? It's not. We're doing the interior. We're actually not going to spend that much time in California. So we're going to go, uh, we'll hit up Tahoe for a week and then down into Yosemite for three weeks and then Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Park area and then we're actually going to make it the plan is to get to Arizona um, New Mexico by winter oh wow okay terrific so. no coastal trips for us I think our I don't know I'm I think our rig is a little bit too big I'm a little daunted to to try and find <laughs> some campgrounds and roads on along the coast so oh really okay okay that's interesting to know um yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of uh, really incredible things to see in the uh, interior uh, 
uh, part of California and, and other points in the country. It's, it's, and so uh, Arizona, New Mexico, you said you hope to get there by as winter starts to, to roll through. Yes, we're going to snowbird and, and fight the Canadians down there to get a spot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, it is, it is always uh, fun to talk to. Uh, I love doing this podcast because, um, you know, I really get to speak with people who, th- there is a commonality, of course, you know, it's the RV, it's the travel but everybody's got their own little thing they want to do and their own approach to it. And, and, you know, it's, there's no, it's not a science, you know, it, it just seems like it goes on and, and it, and everybody kind of writes their own book uh, with their own chapters. And it, I always find it absolutely fascinating and certainly you're no exception. Uh, It just sounds like a a lot of fun and, and that you're enjoying what you're doing. It sounds like it's something you really love. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's relaxing. It's um, it, you know, we work during, we still work during the week nine to five, and then we still are very much weekend warriors. Where we'll we'll do our big hikes and and camping trips on with our tent on the weekends, and yeah. during the week we're you know have our computer screens in front of us and our on conference calls. So we're not too different from most people. Yeah, yeah, and and you know if there, we've had this dis- discussion before with other folks about how the pandemic has. Uh, uh, sort of um, made us have to pivot a little bit, you know, in terms of what we do and how we do it. Um, I have never been busier in my life than I am <laughs> these last 14 months or so um, with just the work I'm doing from home. And, and I, think, I think I'm not the only one, you know, it seems a lot of people are really, they've, they've learned to kind of work from, from their if they're able, if they're, if that's their line of work where they can do it with a computer, they've been able to do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. The world is changing. It is. And what, what, uh, what kind of work do you, you do? I work in finance. Um, so it's, it's mostly, I work, um, all over the country with, with teams all over the country. So I was sitting in Denver before is where I was located before. And I was in an office and I was always on conference calls. So there's really no point for me to be physically in an office anyway. And, yeah. and, um, I was able to persuade my boss in, into thinking that as well. And then my boyfriend, Charlie, he, um, he works in cybersecurity. He's an IT guy. So behind me, you don't see, but he's got like nine monitors. He looks like um, he's hacking the world over there. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like NORAD. Very, you got the, you got the yeah. central control there. Everything is, uh, I think we see just one little screen off to the oh, yeah, one here. side. You get, oh, he's yeah, not there sitting there, but he's got the other ones in the yeah, other Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> wow. Okay. So he's he's tapped in. He's, you know, uh, yeah. We'll know where to go if, if we are run into any uh, IT issues. Well, Julia, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time. We really enjoyed visiting with you. A lot of fun. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. Uh, It is Julia Sharp from The Honey Wagon. You go to underscore The Honey Wagon uh, on Instagram, and that's where you'll find Julia and uh, and Charlie. And of course, their cats and uh, and, and, and a lot of really cool pictures uh, that are, uh, really worth seeing because there's some, some beautiful shots from around the country. Julia Sharp, our guest, we'll be back in just a moment. GPS is Gigi's personal services. She's an RV expert with over three decades of experience. Visit the RVAdvisor.com today. Hi, we're back on the RV Advisor podcast. I'm Tom Alexander, and of course, uh, joined by our guest coordinator, Neve Carizaco. Hey, Neve, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. Yeah, as we record this, we're both looking out our windows. A bit of a rainy day here in South Florida, but that's to be expected this time of year as we uh, have literally just crossed into the wonderful time of hurricane season for the next six oh, months. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So it, it tends to get a little cloudy in the afternoon, and uh, but hopefully we'll keep those big storms away from us as much as we can this year. Right, exactly. 
What is new? What is happening? What's going on? What is new? So I have been working hard with different campgrounds around South Florida and actually quite north too, um, mm -hmm. to see where I can take the RV advisor on the road. Yeah. Um, so I just booked into Nature's RV Resort for July 4th weekend. Um, if any of our followers or listeners um, are interested in scouting, Scalloping, um, obviously that season begins, I think, I think for July, the first week of July, if I'm not mistaken, unless it's the first week of June, I'm not quite sure, but I've never gone scalloping before. So I decided I would take, I would kill two birds with one stone, take the RV advisor on the road and yeah. go and have a nice family vacation for the weekend. So yeah, right. we're going to be there with the RV advisor RV. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do some giveaways at the reception. They've let me, um, I'm going to put together some sort of a package and people can sign up with the chance to win. And that way we can hopefully gain more members and just gain more traction across the RV community, um, as well as just having fun and learning about scalloping up there. So I'm going to do like a bit of both. I'm going to do like an Instagram takeover um, to, you know, show people what they can do in Florida, if that would be interesting to anybody, as well as just, yeah, gaining, gaining traction. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, gaining traction and scalloping. Now, are you a are you a do you like scallops? Um, I, I do like scallops. I've never been scalloping or anything like that. So I'm yeah. going in completely clueless. I am going with my stepson's mom and her family, and we're going as well. So they've done it some like a few times. So I'm uh -huh. gonna heavily rely on those um those folks to help me out. Um mm -hmm. But I'm super, super excited. And I definitely think it'll be interesting to showcase as a fun, different experience. Um, so yeah, basically what you do is rent a boat and go and just kind of paddle and snorkel. And I guess you just catch them and put them in a net, apparently. Yeah, yeah. And then in lemon and butter after, after that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm very, very excited to give something to try. Yeah, or wrap them in bacon, right? Uh, we've, we've had that those. That would be amazing. We've had those too. Yeah. Scallops are good. I, I don't eat them very often, but I, I find them to be a, a, a treat every now and then uh, once or twice a year, I'll have, uh, I'll have scallops sometimes in a, uh, in a nice frutta de mare, which is uh, of course a wonderful Italian dish, uh, literally fruits of the sea. So you got ah, yes, different, you yes, know, yes. yeah, you get a, a, a scallops and, and, and mussels and, uh, I guess uh, calamari and, and different things in there over linguine, you know, and sort that of sounds a, wonderful. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, it's 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 if you're a seafood fan like I am, uh, it's it's terrific. So scalloping with Neve is that's yeah, gonna be scalloping that, with Neve. That's gonna and be our I next actually, segment. I like yes, that. Yes, and I'm excited because I'll try to do some like lives while I'm there, take videos of like oh, the please. experience. Oh, yeah, please Just, do that. I thought it'd be fun. Um, absolutely, we'd love to and, see that. That would it's be going terrific. To be, it's going to be in Homosasta, so Crystal River up northwest Florida. So North about four and a half hours from us here in Fort Lauderdale. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, cool. We want to we want to see that. And yeah. uh, that'll be uh, hopefully um, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's no weeks. time now until July 4th. Yeah. Well, yeah, a few a few weeks, few weeks. We'll get there. We'll we'll show that on a on a future episode for sure. We sure will. And you folks that just listen only, well, you'll just have to imagine. You can paint the pictures in your head. Exactly. Just like exactly. radio. Just like old time radio. Yep. We'll put up, we'll put the music behind it and sound effects. You know. Exactly. Really, yeah, it'd be really cool. Yeah, anyway, awesome. Diva, <laughs> thank you so much for uh taking time out to join us as always. Uh, always great to see you. And uh, we'll be back on uh, Monday with a brand new RV Advisor podcast for Neve Karizako and, of course, the rest of our team. I'm Tom Alexander. Thank you so much for listening and watching the RV Advisor podcast. So long, everybody.